Ready to roll. Okay. Chaim Tevim Shalom. Chaim Chaim. Ah. Now. Now I want to tell you, there's a certain, I don't want to go into any details who I'm talking about. But I spoke to years ago in Adam Chashu Venoida. The person was called a living Masels. He shot him a godl, a, a, a tzaddik, a noibid by big people. He was big. He came from a certain, I don't want to go into any details. And he had a chinuch. That was a healthy, healthy chinuch. They stagged all over the place, and learning babadai and everything. He once described one of the people they admired. Thank you so much. I just started. I was doubting you. You shouldn't miss anything. Thank you so much. He went and he went. So, so, uh, so, uh, so this fellow described one of the people he looked up to. Who was a gain and a tzaddik? I mean, I don't want to say his name. World famous, not uh, He said he learned for eight months. Bas mother Rabbi barely slept. Then two three months he bottled. Then he got back into learning. Did, did you hear? In the middle he bottled. Did you hear that stickle? Then he bottled. Then he got back and he used to alza bach alza. You know he was younger. And he battled, then he got back into learning. He was describing someone he admired, and he threw in, and he battled. Did you hear that? Wow, you know how to do that. Now you have to understand the box business. I'm not knocking the boxes. I think it's part of Lamalam and Teva that people sit in a box and they still stay, because everybody's a different world. How can you compare, you know, but everyone got a fit in. The taka causes a lot of problems. This is mamish, not shaya. Causes problems. The, um, the being in a box, everybody got to be the same. But there's a certain, when you look at your future, the cook of where you're heading, you've, you're, you're human. You're going to be falling. Lechatchila. You're going to start a maizid, start a chavrusa ship. You're going to start a marriage. You're going to start anything. You're starting Azman. Rabbi Miller Zatzal told me I was a bacher and I was a little bit, you know, you needed physic. He said, you'll get there. Don't worry about it. The road gets a little bumpy once in a while. You'll get there. It helps. The road gets a little bumpy. But l'chatchila, that's the matzav. It's bumpy. That's light. It will be bumpy. So what? Look at it like, and you'll sin. <laughs> you'll be initial. Come on. No, don't, don't look for trouble. So then when something happens, don't go berserk. Don't become a sugar. Do you know what happened? <laughs> you ever hear of life? That's what it's all about. There is a safer called Sefer Yosh Lobeinu Tam. It's a reason to get a Sefer. A reason. Lobeinu Tam. Whatever. In there it says, Olam Hazes Nevea Talois. It's a dwelling of Talois. <laughs> Things go wrong all the time. The world of Pekach. That's what it's all about. I speak to someone. They have, but something went wrong. They did a shidduch, something. Uh, 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 uh. This wasn't what I thought, you know. Wasn't the end of the world. And I said, you know, without that peckle, you're not worth a penny. I hate to break the news to you. Pailiyah, it says, if you're there to, 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 um, to, um, to marry off your kids and everything's fine. Mutav shalai nivra. Why don't you ha- go up to the malachim and sit with them? Kotzke Rebbe said, Nebuch said, Malachim Abba Kinek. I don't know Malachim. I want people who fall and they fall hard and they have peklach that can drive you up a wall. That's what you're here for. With peklach that can drive you up a wall. With Averis. But how could you do that? With Averis. Yes, with Averis. 
Ain't tzaddik bar, it's a shayat, a toivel ayechta. It's tough. No way out of that. Ezra said, the Alpha Sambatka mentions, you have a various till shemaim. It's a posik. It's a posik. We have a various till shemaim. Ezra! You know who he was? He was a Moshe Rabbeinu. He could have had Nisim like Moshe Rabbeinu. Dar wasn't Roy Lakat. He was a leader of leaders. He brought back the whole second base on Mikdash. Ezra made such a remark. We're all full of sins. It's tough. I'm sorry to break the news to you. You're going to be initial and this and that. So what? So what? Doesn't mean you shouldn't do tshuva. But that lost dog, you don't know how it hampers your betachin. Forget it. Anybody that wants to embark on me, this is a Get up front the message loud and clear. All the mafshayim I have a safe here. That he has everybody, Maner Samor, Chachmo Musa, Sefer Antabi, his name was. He has the Ikrim, he has the Maspik, he has the Rabban, he has the Rabbani Yang, he has the Chabat Chaim, he has the Madrigas Odom, he has the Rabdas, he has the Sherman Munim, he has the world sitting in there. And whoever says two, three lines about Betachen, come on, every one of them doesn't feel to say, uh, If you don't realize, that you could be the worst bum and still be a Baal you blew it. You don't hop. It's not happening because your Baal gets ruined by the guilt. Guilt. I did that. That wasn't right. Someone just came or they come over to me all day. I have guilt. I once did. And they feel good about that guilt. And it's good to feel good because if you have Tsar, that's a good, that's a big Zach. But don't sit with that, sir, or you'll go with sugar. You're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to be proud that you're the type that has tar. But now, go vita. What do you care? Guilt. I told the guy, do chuva on the guilt. What are you feeling guilty for? The worst Yetzirah is feel like you're zero. That's number one. None of that stuff. That's the Yetzirah. Don't you dare do that. But you know what I did? That, didn't I tell you the road gets a little bumpy? You should have expected that. You gotta be initial. I don't care what you do. And by the way, they all take turns. Yesterday was kinna. Today, okay, we had enough of that stuff. How about some taiva garbage? Boom, finish with that. COVID, kinna, taiva, COVID. Geshe once gave us schmooze. Kinna, taiva, COVID, kinna, taiva. Now you go. Uh, let's give you a chance. <laughs> Taiva COVID. Okay, let's get some of that garbage. If this, that's how the Shabbos It's a bunch of baloney. The Abish is just testing you to see if you can move forward, even though you're <laughs> not so perfect. Rav Scheinberg used to say, keep smiling and keep going. Keep moving. He used to say, Baravim, keep moving, Rabbi Isai. He was Gavaldi. Keep smiling and keep going. As long as you keep going, don't be sending his problem. Now listen to this story. It's hot full of a fellow. I got a phone call. One of my big, 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 big chassidim. Not Shaykh. He calls me up. Rabbi Mendel. I couldn't. He, he's a kailo man. He's learning for years in kailo. A sweet fellow. He's learning in kailo. And in a far off place. He doesn't live among but he's got his 50 people in the kail. And last month, his chavruses were in the garbage one after another. It did, this didn't work, that didn't work. This didn't work, that one. And he was crying. He finally had enough. He said, I'm going to leave kail. I can't make it. With and he's he's in a cloistered place where everyone knows each other and it's done deal, you know. He just, it just didn't work. Whatever he tried, no chavruses. Came Ben Azman. He decided, I'm going to do Mandel's. I got to get credit, of course. Mandel's. Listen to this. No kvetching. Not a word. No kvetching. He spent the whole Benaz Manim. I don't know if he learned so much Musa, per se, but he went around saying, I got a great Chavusa. All day long. Oh, it's fine. I have a few guys who did that. Just keep talking. Positive. Oh, yeah, yeah. And for three, I mean, as man, it's a few weeks. Nothing happened. It, it, he lives in Yehopitz, you know. How are you going to get a chabrusa over there? And you oh, I got a chabrusa. 
the first day in his month, the Rosh Hakel walks over to him, you got a Chavrusa? Instead of saying, I worked so hard on Betachem, and I still don't have, no, 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 no. He made up his mind, no kvetching is no kvetching. Sure, I got a Chavrusa. I'm doing Gavaldi. The next day, in walks a Mephisk, somebody from Yehupitz, decided he's going to visit another Yehupitz. From En Yehupitz, Satsvetan. And this second, he came from nowhere. And the guy was a match to him in his life. He never had, they're sitting and learning Basmada, two star a day. It's not Shaykh, it's a Shirach Mena Shemayim. I want to give the guy a compliment that he didn't give up the last day. Because in my, I, my instruction, Rabbi Zah told me, when it really goes bad, it's just the Yebishta. But it's not working, it is working. He wants to see if you're going to keep being in action, then you get everything. You throw in the towel, you blew it. Now, I wouldn't say you blew it. That part I don't, I don't like for us. You know, you didn't blow it. You'll get schar. It's gonna, only good will come from the baton. Anyway, this fellow told me, Rabbi Mandel, you don't know how much I am your chassid. I've heard you 200 hours. You're part of my life. You changed me completely. I, I have decided I'm coming to visit you. I'm coming all the way. He's taking a helicopter from your hoopets to my backyard. And he plans to come in. And that's it. We're gonna, and be prepared, he tells me. I'm going to kiss you from head to toe, he tells me. <laughs> you Be ready. I'm going to kiss you. What? Oh, thanks, Vidura, any time. I should go to Kabbalah, I should go to Brothers. Because of Yavi, Kala Loshet. Talking weekly. Talking hotline. And Springs Hill, and everybody, Rabbi Fried, all these, and Rabbi, Rabbi Bursting, all these holy Jews. He just got me, he went all the way out of his way to get me the big baton. Anybody want the big one? And he gave away. We got all the good people here. Now, so, so he says, I'm going to be kissing you from head to toe. Be prepared, because I'm crazy over you. You don't know what you did for me. I told him, you don't have to do that. Just give me a fat check. <laughs> I says, lo yiro fun come. Lo yiro fun you have to, it's fine. Just give me a fat check. So it's on good. Thank you, Bobby. Anyway, but the thing is, I told you about the nose. You heard about the nose? Okay. I was in the commons. I met two young alike come running up. Rabbi Mandel, you've been talking weekly. One of them comes over to me. He tells me, by the way, one of the biggest Rabbi Mandel, like, I'm not saying his name in public, but the most famous you know, right behind Forshaima, or maybe above, or being one of those, runs over to me just the other day. He says, I must tell you this. I read your Betachem Weekly, and boy, I got chizik. I just want you to know that. Okay, can I print your name the next? Uh, we'll hold with that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, so this, um, so this guy was, okay. So he says, Rabbi Mendel, I had trouble with my nose. This is Givaldi. His nose needed an, an operation. It wasn't the end of the world. The newest, and the newest got stuffed up with all kinds of bandages, you know, post operation, and he was out of it. He couldn't learn. He couldn't do nothing. So he had, he sat the next three, four days watching Torah anytime. Mandel, of course. He was watching me, of course. After three, four days, his wife said, I forbid you to watch Mandel. You're laughing so hard. Your nose is all messed up. <laughs> no, but watch him in. He'd make you laugh. So you imagine he told me the story. Is that a good one? Anyway. Anyway, it's a good. I'm glad to hear that I'm funny. Okay. Now. Ah. I told you the mic was with the kid. The 13-year-old kid that had a tchiyas amesim. I told you about the 13-year-old kid. You heard it already? Okay, here goes. I get a phone call. 
a 13-year-old boy is suddenly out of commission. He's had anorexia for the last few weeks. He is turning into, he decided it's time for a diet. And he's almost, I spoke to one of these guys on the phone. What do you look like exactly? Uh, are a stick or a, a thread? Where are you holding? Anyway, I told him, I'd like you to eat more because I like you. I want more of you. I always tell this to my wife. Don't go on diets. I want more of you. That's what I tell my wife. I want more of you. No, I want the more the better. Anyway. So, I have my own. I am telling you something. Anyway. So, the guy, so here's the story. It's another thing story. The guy tells me that um, the father calls me up and he tells me my son lost his memory. He is not functioning. He's in bed. He's pale. Rahman al his pulse and his this and his that. And we're going with sugar. And we already spoke to the doctor and he's very worried. And it's a failure. I said, you know, Rav Hutner, I once heard Rav Hutner on the phone talking to somebody. He's talking on the phone. And he tells the guy, do you know what Lahada means? He was telling somebody, do you know what Lahada means? With an accent. He used to rub in the accent. His accent was like Hatchila. It wasn't like I'm never f- from the Haman. I have to talk. No, no. <laughs> we say it like this. <laughs> yeah, it's a big vote of it. It's not so posh. Stoltz. Nobody's been the ever around here. Do you know what Lahada means? Go tell him in my name. Lahadam. Now, I use that a lot on the phone. I tell the father, your son is lehoyu dvarim me'olam. He is nothing wrong with him. So I told him. He's nothing. Right after I said that, for the first time in who knows how long, he suddenly got up, and he got up for a minute. And half an hour later, he got up a second time, which was a chiddush nifla. I became an instant hero. Until two, two days later, when they called me up again, Rabbi Mandel, it's worse and worse despite all your brachas. He's in ICU. Now we really got a problem. And the doctors are going with sugar. And they just found the swelling in the brain and this and the... I says, do you know what Lahada means? <laughs> but I see you, yeah, I see you, I see Shmu. Don't give me this garbage. I've made a bittle of the whole ICU, my ICU. I see you, I see you, I see you. Oh, I see you, yes. I see you look healthy to me. I see you. I say, do you know what Lahada means? And I repeated it a few times. I'm not gay as the whole ICU shmoo. The kid's perfect. Right after I said that, Mithamal, the kid opened his eyes. He asked for a tillum. He started smiling. Oh, but still, they kept calling me back and forth, a little better, a little worse. And finally, the safe. By the way, he has a 15-year-old bro- brother. And the father tells me, his brother wants to talk to you. I says, what do I have with his brother? He said, his brother wants to be able to tell his friends that he spoke to Mandel. <laughs> Isn't that Gavaldi? <laughs> that father tells you this. He wants to be able to tell his friends. <laughs> I spoke to Mandel. I had just finished Davini Mincha. I like to tell my friend, do you know who I just spoke to? Do you know who I just spoke to? Melech Malcham Lachem because his brother, why did you make a spiel out of that? Lachayim. Anyway, I wasn't curious the whole thing. I kept giving up talkers and brachas nonstop. I left it off. But over Shabbos, they're going to have to take that. No! He's coming home for Shabbos! Half hour before Shabbos, Rabbi Mendel, he's home. And he looks as good as new. Just like you said. You want another Mephus? This is not Shire. This guy couldn't get a shit off. Because this Bacha couldn't come inside to make yourself at home. This Bacha couldn't get a shit off. He had something seriously wrong with his eyes. Something wrong with his eyes. And they needed to operate. And the parents were calling me forever. And I said, um, I said, 
nothing wrong with his eyes. I said a few times. But it's still, they kept calling me, but still it's a little better since your bracha. I said, there's nothing wrong. Your eyes are perfect. Said, oh, a little better, yeah, but still. And, then, and he can't start shidduchim. Because, you know, because of her. He's got a matzav. Going to get married and he needs an operation on his eyes. He never was able to see throughout his life, this poor guy. And now it got worse and worse. And now he's in shidduchim. And the guy's he's a chsidah shabacha, 20 years old. It's time to get married, you know. By that means, it's obedo. So, so I said, there's nothing wrong with the guy. You're going to have nisim gluyim. He's going to have perfect eyes. He's getting a shidduch. I get a phone call. Rabbi Mendel, right after your last bracha, we went to a new doctor, took one look at him, and he said, no operation necessary. The first time was like Nisa. They never heard that. This is going on for years. Operation, operation, suddenly ice. All we have to do is put in some whatever, uh, some type of contact line. I'm not sure what they're doing exactly. He's going to be fine. And I promise, and the Shirak is coming a month later. The guy's a chassan. Isn't that a beauty? So I had a Tchia Samesim with a chassan. I got all kinds. Chiyas HaMesim is old news by me. I want to tell you something. Why did Elisha know me? How come I'm batting a thousand? How come all my, you know, all kidding aside, every guy that calls me. I was a mighty person. I don't even remember. I possibly don't remember the mighty person. I had one just a few, they told, doctor said, the kid's going to need a vent. What is that? Uh, something you stick in the throat for the rest of your life to make the kid breathe. Trait. Craig Vent, one of these things. I says, and they said, it's impossible not to. It must. And the, the parents call me up crying on the phone. I says, Mandel at Gazak, Nain is Nain. They speak Yiddish. They speak. I said, no is no. What are you telling me? My sister. A week later, they call me back. Mandel, a mysterious thing happened. The doctor suddenly, well, we changed our mind. No, ness, no need. The vent, but what have you called the trait? The vent, ice. I just got another call. The kid has other problems. Abracha, everybody. Shuz Gemulitz. I told you about the 25 year old girl that's a Kala. Told you about her? Okay. 25. Some girl did something for me. It was this Pesach. On Pesach, I can't get anybody to do my Betachem weeklies. Pesach, it's not in a game. So I really need, that's a real help for me. Guy comes over to me, I'll do it for you. When he's finished, my daughter will do it for me. I finished, I pay, don't give me anything. I want a bracha. She's 25, she needs a shidduch. I said, your daughter is a kala. Two weeks later, I went to the vault. <laughs> How's that one? You want me to kill it? All the fun? As much as a Balgaimenik as I am, I have an honest streak. Grada later he told me, if your mic was, he was raving over me, I was like, he said, she was seeing that boy already. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't working. It was, it was a Gansa Mishmash. And right after you said she's engaged, suddenly things started going smooth. And she, but I messed up the, um, I took away a little bit of the, of the, I fought, believe in saying the truth. I had two people sitting over here, a man and a lady, speaking about the truth. They are married 20 years at least, and they are at war. From day one, they've been fighting battles 24 seven, and they're both good at it. Both of them are good. I gotta watch them in action. And they're very, they know all the pitch of kiss, what's wrong with this one. With, she knows how to, no, but that's not really ice scalp. No, that's not. Anyway, they came to me. I says, I don't deal with Shalom Bias. I could do one or two things. Either you get a bracha and suddenly you're getting along. I have a couple of those stories. Or I have both of you saying nice stuff and they live happily ever. You're going to say nice stuff? Yeah. It wasn't nice. They couldn't. 
get themselves. I says, why don't you guys want to say something nice? You ready for this? We both are very truthful people. <laughs> Did you hear the from HR at his best? Come inside. We both are truthful. We don't do that stuff, Rabbi Mindel, with your lies. Come move, move, move back. Uh, this time, how many people? 800? Uh, waiting outside? Oh. Oh, okay. Anyway, we only tell the truth. You see what's going on? The people tell the truth. I pride myself on one of the biggest liars in Lakewood. <laughs> I lie my head off 24 7. I'm not in a spell. People, but you're not allowed to lie. You know, it says that you're Mashanan. You're allowed to be Mashanan. You ever hear that? You know, you're not supposed, from day one, you lie. At the Hasidah, you're supposed to be lying. What do you mean? You're not supposed to say, um, are you from Beis Shammai? Uh, I have news to tell you, your kala looks horrible. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're supposed to say. Beis Shammai says, all, all her friends go over to whatever. Or whoever says this, you really got a pill. You go, you go like Beis Shammai. The truth. But I'm Zog the Memes. Zog the Memes. No. You're not allowed to lie. You're not allowed to lie. Kala, Kamaisho. It's a Gemara. You ever learned Ksubis, Perry Bays? Take a look. You want to be like Beis Shammai? There's a reason why we pass it on Beis Shammai. Well, if she had comes, we'll be able to handle that stuff. I don't know. Right now, if she had comes, they'll all become the Vardigas. And as soon as they hit, she looks terrible and say, it's just what I wanted. <laughs> when she had come, they shot me, I'll be in business. I'll be fine. Yeah, who cares? they will be a little high in Madrega. But we go like Beis Hillel, where you're supposed to lie. It's a Gemara. And we paskin like that, Gemara. Lie, minatoire, minayin, ayin, subis, yudchas, where is it? Yudchas, take a look. You ever hear Mishana Bnei HaShalom? Oh, you want to know a real liar of the century? I shouldn't say such a thing. It's a gnai. I'm just joking. But now let's get Lamaisa. Arna Koyin used to go around saying, that guy loves you. Really? Yep. You know that guy loves you. Really? Yep. The next time they met, they weren't on speaking terms. They didn't speak to each other for two years. And suddenly, they kissed and hugged. And he loves you and he really does. It, those days you were able to lie and get away with it. Because people believed the Arda <laughs> Today, Mandel, don't tell me I'm a great guy. You say that to everybody, it's no good. It's puzzle. Nowadays you can't lie. They became very truthful. I, it says, Emes Naderis. It's a stira. It says when Mashiach comes, it was in Mashiach. Emes what? Emes not there is no more truth. You know what the Emes Abshad is? The truth is what you're supposed to be doing. That's called the truth. The truth isn't, you know, a Yekisha put the blinders on you. I only say the truth. You know the, the famous story of the guy, the Nazis were about to get a hold of him. And they said, how old are you? If you're 70, we leave you alone. If you're a day younger, we shoot you dead. I'm not allowed to lie. I never lied my entire life. I will tell you the truth. I'm 69. I'll be 70 in a couple of weeks. But right now I'm 69. Good. Shoot. He's dead. And this guy thinks he's going straight to Elam He's going straight to Gehenna. Why did you tell him the truth for? You must say the truth. You must. Rabbi Miller, they say, had a vod with Avram Gurdzinski. Is that true? That's what they say? Avram Gurdzinski was the number one Balmus. There was nothing like him. I, I can't describe his greatness. It's beyond. The ultimate, I believe he was the one that the Chavetz Chaim said about him, that I am a Chavetz Farim. And the people, 
he made, because Chavetz Chaim knew him before and after. What Chavetz Chaim, what, if you fell into the altar of Slobodka's hands, he took a hold of you within a short time. He turned you around. He was not shy of what he was. He was the biggest. Rav Nossin Zatzal, Rav Nossin told me, the Velt has no music how big that man was. The altar of Slobodka. Can't explain his greatness, how he understood people. What was I talking about just now? Oh, oh. and he, Chavetz Chaim, said about him. Chavetz Chaim said about, I am Machaba Sforim. The Altam Slabotka is Machaba mentioned people. He creates it now. Rom Gruzensky, that's the story, Rabbi Miller's Reishvad. When he went to Slabotka, someone got up there and said, Let's work on Emmis. And Rom Gerzensky said, no, sir. What did he say? We don't work on Emmis around here. Rabbi Miller? Nobody straighter than he was. He said, this is what they say over. It was the most profound vod he ever heard in his life. It changed him completely forever. And I live by that. I am a, one of, I'm the, the number one pathological liar of Lakewood. And I'm proud. Just like I'm proud to be one of the biggest Bali Gaiva. I'm not a Stama Bal Gaiva. I'm a Bal Gaiva Beshita. I'm real Bal Gaiva Beshita. I stay with them, you know. Anyway, and I also lie. You know, the lies I've done for me. I had a matzah recently that I don't want to reveal my personal. I also, believe it or not, even though sometimes I want to pinch myself because I'm beginning to feel I'm a malach already. And so they went, are you still human? I had an assignment recently, believe it or not. Come to rain, come to rain. Let the guy, <coughs> you want to push? Lick the dish, the Rebbe. Okay, the Rebbe, I'm an underweight Rebbe. There's plenty of room. Come to rain, Mach Anyway, I had an assignment recently, listen to this. A guy came over to me. And he said, you know, you have a problem. And I said, oh yeah? As I do. This just happened. Oh yeah? I'm not impressed. But do you know what happened? Yeah. So? <laughs> I'm not, you know, I'm not. A... In my books, everything's fine. Within two days, the matzo was totally different. And what was I doing all the time? Laughing internally. Laughing, eh, some, eh. you said something wrong, eh, so what, everything will re work out. This guy did something wrong, eh, he didn't mean it. I don't care what it is. A bittle, I had a guy who used to come to this vod religiously for two years. He told me what changed his life is when I kept saying, Lach zechais, say that a million times a day. Laugh, yeah, laugh at it. I do this all the time. It works. Uh, about health problems. Come to line. Health situations. You have aches and pains all over the place. And you say, don't bother me, I'm fine. And watch it disappear. You could even do that with serious stuff. Or relationships. Or guilt. Anything. Laugh your head off. Laughing. <laughs> Is the Welt says the Gaiish Welt Lahavdul says laughter is the best medicine. They got that from the guy. Ruach is yechalka machaleu. If you're happy, then you get a refuah. The body likes simcha. Laugh, bittle, not just laugh. Jokes. I laugh. Yeah. The problem. Bah, I'm full of bittle 24/7. Bah, bah, bah. A court case. You laugh at the in your face. You're spitting at the judge in his face. Don't go against him. I don't like that. I, ha I had to do this more than once. I had to face a judge. My Rebbe had to do it with judges. The judge was a anti-Semite first class. And in my mind, he's my best friend. And I loved him. I, in my mind, that's all it takes. Oh, he's a sweet guy. And I'm not scared of him. Nah. Instead of Antisemit. I'm going to get him back. Don't do that. Did you hear what I'm saying? 
don't, I have Shemosh. I have a lot of Shemosh. I heard this from, I'll tell you who, Rav Chaim Tzvi Fogel from Hebron, one of the top, top number one man in Yerushalayim from Rameya Chodesh's stars at Tzadik, a Goynad. There's no one like him. I am a Musu. Every movie makes, ah, these guys the lane. You see the glory of Slabotka is still alive. I'll tell you where else you'll find Slabotka. Baruch Mat Chazrachi, the lasagna bench. Is he the real thing? Ah, delicious. And this one, he's the same, same chavra. And he told me this. You're going to a court case? Don't start knocking the other side. Bah. And they're no good. And they're anti-Semites. I can't say, bah. you know what he told me? You do that, you become a raidif, and now you're not going to win so fast. Because you're putting him down, now you're the big shot. Don't do that. Stick up for the person involved and keep davening. They should turn out good. And just davening for that. But don't knock the other side. And what I did, more than once, I loved the judge. And he loved me. Navardigas, believe. Famous story of Chaim Balazan, I think it is. Famous story, Kamayim Panam on Panam. This part of it says, Russia Marusha wanted to kill a Jew. And the Jew said, I, I think it was a Chesidish Rebbe, who was the Maitzah with? It's a, fam- it's a f- true story. So you had to go through, and this guy will kill you. He was, I like him. And suddenly he melted. Oh, how are you? And best friends. It's all in your mind. Kamayim Panam on Panam. That's right. I did this with more than one judge who was known to be the real anti-Semite. One of them, I had to meet out of traffic, traffic violation. And, and the doc, and the, <clears throat> and what happened? The guy said, I had a Los Angeles license. I had just come from LA. I never changed to New Jersey. And I thought, all right, you still have a license, but it's not true. You have a license of a different state, uh, they wrote on the ticket, unlicensed driver. You know what that means? Bit to the mice, besides speeding. So I had to meet the guy. So I spoke to two from judges, uh, from lawyers. They both said, for $200 an hour, those days $200? $500. Maybe. They both said the same. Oh, him? That judge? I'll tell you his name, Leslie Tinkler. I don't know if he's still around. He's not around? He was the judge in Howell. And he had a reputation. If he met a from Jew, who wiped the flow with him. He was perfect. I was in a spot, I should be the last guy because they're going to make a ganza chul Hashem. He's going to start, you know. But anyway, I was in a spot. I went straight to my tata. And I wasn't gay to say this. No, I took no lawyers. I took Chayva Sabov Shah Batokhan, I took a Tillam, and I sat in the courtroom, and I was alone with the boss. I said, Zabish, there were 200 people packed into that courtroom. And I said, Zabish, I want to be the last, because I don't want to make a Chal Hashem, this guy's going to kill me. Anyway, unlicensed driver, guess what happened? And I was davening, sorry, I was the last guy. Or second, I think it was Mamish the last. Let's say the last for sure, it sounds better. So, I was the last. And I'm standing there and I showed him my license. Because I didn't even have the LA license on me in the car. He wrote unlicensed driver. So I didn't have any license. It was home. The LA license, which isn't really good. So I come in, I'm, I'm like quiet and nervous. I wasn't like I am today, but I don't know how to stop talking. Those days, I didn't know how to stop being quiet. And I just give him my license. Oh, I feel so bad. You had to come all the way from Los Angeles. I'm so sorry. It was over. (laughs) I didn't say anything. I said, well, I moved to Lakewood and I have to get... (laughs) My neighbor told me, you know, you have to be honest, but you don't have to be a Tom. You have to tell them, no, let's be amistic. <laughs> I actually moved, so give me a ticket. Give me a, no. He said, I feel so bad. You had to make a trip all the way from Los Angeles. This anti-Semite, that two of the Jewish, they knew him well. Two of the biggest lawyers in Lakewood, the two top 
they, re they said for $200, maybe, but probably not. He's too tough to deal with, and he'll, he's anti-Semit and everything. And uh, all I said was, well, here's the license. And he was my best friend. Listen to this. And the cop, whose name was Cohen, it was a service made you when this happened. The cop gave me off on the speeding. Man, less point, less everything. And then the two guys kissed each other. It was interesting. They were both Jewish. Jewish guts. It was interesting. That was the end of the story. I had those two tickets hanging for years. And memory, sweet memories of the court case. That's something. That's one of the court cases I had. I had another one <laughs> where the judge, I'll tell you what I did. It had to do with a little Shemir Salashin. I felt uncomfortable. I had to start being nasty, whatever. And I didn't feel comfortable. And I don't cry. Today, maybe more. You know when I cry? You want to hear something? Years. You can't get me to cry to save my life. For years and years, because my Shah B'tachin caused me to become a different Bria. I, I can't cry. Rabbi told me this. Rosh Hashanah, you're supposed to cry. Halavai, I could cry. It doesn't go. Rabbi used to laugh his head off all the time. I, I became like that. But recently I said, look, a lot of people come to you. You have to feel with them. So let's get more. So as soon as I was installed for that, now I could, I'm good. I could cry, no problem. Not too much. Also, Shvach But those days, my mom just couldn't cry to save my life. Some odd reason. As soon as I got up to speak, I was supposed to be there for 20 hours. The worst lawyer in the state. A world famous lawyer that my friends described, another lawyer from one of my friends described her as a viper. A lady, a viper. Ooh, she tough. She'll kill you like she knows. And I'm not the type, you know, i got to be safe of myself before we start. As I said before, I'm not from the biggest, I'm from the official liars. So, so, so I'm going to be in trouble. And so what happened? Rabbi say, take the talk on weeklies. Give them all out. How many are you taking? Let's go. How many are you taking? Give them out in shoes. No, how many? Chai. Chai? Okay, how many are you taking? Take them out. No? All kinds. How many are you going to take? Give them out. No? Okay. Anyway, so the big ones, the little ones, take them all. Especially the little ones. Big ones I may want to give my school a little bit. So what was I saying? I started crying in the middle of the trial. When, when am I time up? When are you going to... One more minute? So I started crying. I didn't want to speak Lush and Hara. It was Nagay or something. I started crying. I don't, what's with you? You know, they're all like, Mandel, what got into you? The guy, the judge, melted. I said, Leave this guy alone. It was over. I was acquitted, innocent. In 10 minutes, the court case should have been a court case that would have been, you know, one of those. In 10 minutes, I just walked in, in and out. It was over. How did I do it? I spent a month talking about the judge, my best friend. I'm talking about the lawyer. You know, do you know what la da means? About the lawyer. The worst, that lawyer, there was a, is the number, it's a world famous name. Nobody wins with that against that lawyer, except for me. <laughs> and someone else is having trouble with that lawyer. I give her, oh, that lawyer, just forget it, you won. If you're Ba'etzim not afraid, they can't harm you. The only reason they can harm you is because... And listen to all the news, what they say about how great the lawyer is. That'll kill you, B'tachem. I don't even listen to the news. I have no interest. I have one Tata in Shemayim. But who made... Who get, where's your mouth from, Mr. Lawyer? Who gave that to you? Where's your brain from? I deal with the one who made you. Um, you're not scaring me. It's not happening. I honestly have that feeling. I once won three courts. It wasn't my own Zacha. Neighbors, people, are diverse problems in two weeks, three court cases. I told every one of them, you won, you won, you won. Because I simply aren't afraid of judges. They don't scare me. It, to me, it's a joke.